impact all of our relationships with Miro Egedi. If you're new to this channel, please kindly click on the subscribe button and be a part of this growing channel. So now there is this video that has been trending on Twitter about a little girl from Chrisland School. If I wouldn't say little girl, I would say of some kids from Chrisland School. So Chrisland School is located in Kaibo areas of Lagos because they have branches and I think they also have a branch in Abuja. The school, um, the students are from kindergarten, like nursery school age up to pre-degree college age. So it happened that there was a, a trip that was organized, you know, for the students of the school to attend in Dubai. And 76 of them, according to the school, 76 of them went to this trip. And 71 of them abided to the school code of conduct and five of them did not. So if you have seen this video, you will see that there's a, a, there are about four or five students in a room and sexual intercourse occurred. And the mother cried out. Now, people have been passing accusing fingers to the school and some people are blaming the parents for bad parenting. I have happened to see this video because I do not want to make um, irrational judgments and I want to give my own take, you know, based on what is out there. Now, when I saw this video people are quick to call the girl out but are not calling out the guys now people have said that this girl it doesn't seem like that was her first time it seemed like that but the question to me is who disvirgin this girl the school said that they've asked these kids how the whole incident came about and the kids said that they were playing truth or death. But according to the account of the mom, the, the mother of the, of the girl, she said that she had learned her film charger to one of the boys and she went upstairs to get it. But when she got there, she was drugged and that incident occurred. Now, I don't know what to believe now. All of these things are alleged, alleged. You hear from this person, you hear from this person, and then you can make your own judgment. But again, we are not court of law, so the court would have to decide how best to met punishment to these kids and to the school. Now, let's say that indeed, what was going on there was truth or dare. All the other boys in that room, why did they feel comfortable for that girl to strip herself of all of her clothes and engage in that act? All those boys clearly are also culprits. Now what we saw was what happened between the girl and a guy. We were not there with them, with all of them to see how long this whole thing happened and if they took turns. Because you could see that in that video, another one was sleeping right beside them and watching. And another one was going round with the video and recording. And you could hear the voice of another one saying things. So there are all culprits. Well, because they're all minors, it becomes very difficult to say how, you know, <laughs> see there is a court of law whereby penalties are awarded to juvenile offenses and as far as I'm concerned there should be penalties for what has happened because none of them tried to stop that from happening but rather they were all involved you know in order for that act to go on now, secondly, because we are saying that it was, they, she consented. 
But if she has been drugged, did she have the capacity to give consent? Hold that thought. Now, did she also consent to her being recorded? If it was true to there, did they say that we are going to record you? Did she also consent for that recording to be sent to the public space? Because it's been said that she's not coerced. Let's say indeed she wasn't. But how do we now know that her own side of the story where she's saying that she, she was drugged is not true? I want to ask the school a question because according to the mother's account, she said this whole thing happened. She was called, but she was not notified exactly what happened. The school told her that according to her, the school told her that she was kissing somebody else. And then she promised the school that she would caution her child when she gets home. So the school did not give her the full story of what has happened. Now, she also mentioned that the school called her child aside and they were interrogating her at different occasions. They kept on blackmailing and threatening the girl. And the girl was not able to speak to her and tell her the truth because she was afraid. Now, the school called her and they were organizing Zoom meeting with the board of trustees and all of that. And there was never a time that they told her. They kept on speaking to her in parables. But they were never straightforward to tell her what exactly happened. Now, when the thing now came out in the air, they now decided to suspend the child indefinitely from coming to the school. My question to the school is, do you understand? According to the constitution of Nigeria, every child from primary school age to secondary school must go to school. It is the basic education that every child must have. So the school has committed a crime to that child by suspending her indefinitely. You cannot take a child out of school because you do not have the power to put that child out of school. You need to go to court and let the court decide. So when you decided to start beating around the bush about the incident with the mother, what exactly were you trying to cover up? Is there more to the story that you're trying to cover up? Because every organization, every institution have a code of conduct. They have a policy that when we enroll to this organization, when we subscribe to these organizations, we need to sign and abide by those policies. So these kids clearly breached that school code of conduct. Because I don't think there is any school, school code of conduct that would allow for young school students to be to engage in sexual intercourse so when your policy has been breached when the rules and regulation that has been laid down for your school your institution has been breached what do you do report the matter to the police because again your your policies cannot override the policy of the law of the country in which you stay it can't. So you have to discuss this within your panel, invite the child and the mother. You cannot interrogate a minor without the mother being present. It's illegal. And you did that again and again and again, according to the mom. So you have to invite the, the child's parents to school and discuss with them. And you shouldn't invite just the girl child. You should invite all of the children in that room, their parents. But for confidentiality purposes, you can interrogate them or discuss with them one after the other privately. 
and report the matter to the police as well. You didn't do that. The prestige of your school is more important to you than the life and the well-being of these children. The mother said that her child was invited to have COVID test three times. And she alleged that pregnancy test was carried out on her daughter. But the school said it was COVID tests and that was pre-Dubai. But let's go by what is out there because at the end of the day, we are not the court of law and the court would have to decide how best, you know, to punish the offenders. The mother said pregnancy tests by blood and by urine was conducted on the child without her awareness or consent, without the parent's awareness or consent. Now, if this is true, that is another crime again that the school have done to the child and to the parents of the child. So from all of these things that I am talking about, we can see that there are some laws that has been breached. These children, all minors, have no business engaging in such acts. And they should be taken to court, to juvenile courts, and there should be penalties according to that court because the way that court functions is very different with how the normal adult court, court would go on. So according to the children's court, any penalty that is supposed to be meted to this case should be meted to this case. And now the school, for ha having failed this child as well, should also face the court of law. So when they say justice for this child, they are not wrong to say that they want justice for this child because some laws has been breached. People should not focus on whether it was a consensual act or not, but every other gray area around that act as well should not be neglected. All of this has to be looked into. Now for the parent, I am in no position to come and tell you that your parenting skills isn't good enough or is not appropriate, but I need you to think about something. And not just to this parent, but to all parents and also to the parents of the boys in that because they, they are all culprits. Now think about something. Something happened to your child. Say she was drugged because I'm also suspecting the, 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 the drug um, 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 story. Now the child said she was drugged and she was coerced. The other children, or according to the school, said it was truth or dare. But a truth or dare does not make it okay for that to happen. So if indeed that was what happened and the little girl is lying, all these people, all, all of them, need to be held accountable and discussed, go to therapy. Now, if it's drugs, because the school was covering up this information, I don't know if, you know, tests can be carried out to see if there is traces of drugs in her system because now it's not going to be her word against theirs. So I don't know if there is a way for them to see if there are traces of drugs in her system. But the school, having covered up this information and they did not speak out for such a long time, should be held accountable because if this was reported immediately and then every action that the police is supposed to take in order for them, you know, to come to the root of this matter and find out truth, you know, make their proper investigation, the school did not let that happen by covering up. So the school <laughs> cannot be absolved. Drugs, drugs, drugs. You just, ah, man, I just see the decadence of that society. Some people said, now that child is age 10 and some people say that that child is 13 years old whatever the case these children should be within the age bracket of 10 and 14. 
How did they come about drugs? Who gave them drugs? Again, I don't understand why the school chose not to disclose what happened to the parents of those children. And this is why I'm beginning to think like, who are the parents of all of these children involved? Is there a child of the mighty ones involved in this act? And they are trying to protect either the school's name or the parents of the child. I don't know. I'm just saying I might be wrong because the school, if only they did not hide this thing. I don't even see any reason why the school should be blamed if they did not hide it that the child just sneaked out and went to the boy's room and she did what she did. But because they've been hiding it, I'm just thinking that these kids were coached to say that. I might be wrong, but it's seeming like that. Because I'm wondering, like, who are they protecting? What are they hiding? There is more to this story. However, this girl should not feel comfortable because kids, they would hide to do things that adults have told them not to do because they know they are, they are guilty they know it's not right but because they want to explore they'll still find a way to do it but being so bold enough to do that and put that out there is something that beats my imagination something is not right here there's something not very clear about this story and this is why i want to parents like parents the parents of this this girl and every other parent listening to me I'm in no position to tell you that you lack the skills, you know, to train up your child appropriately, you know, to each his own. But think about this. You should be the go-to to your children. Your children should feel comfortable to approach you with any discussion, issues, good or bad, whatever it is. They should see you as their confidant. Now, if they do not feel that way with you, then there is a problem because you would not be able to guide them as you do. They will be afraid to come to you. Now, I need you to think about this very well. Why was my child so afraid? Has she been brainwashed? Because she said that she was threatened. This is also another problem because this, this is a very sensitive um, thing going on here and because it's involved minors so she has been threatened and maybe that's why she didn't speak but because she also said that when they told you about the kissing thing you went and you were beating your child and you said you've been beating the child see you see corporal punishment is not very helpful there are times whereby it would be more effective for you to sit down and have that one-on-one -on -one discussion with your child not beating that child because you have beaten fear into that child that that child does not feel comfortable to come to you and that child is thinking things would go out of proportion if she tells you and it did so how would that child feel next time would that child want to come back to you again to relate things like that to you i pray it doesn't even happen again so the school i personally you the school should not expel or suspend a child but I think if I was in your position, I'll take the child completely away from that area. I'll, I'll move to somewhere really far, maybe out of that state or another place entirely and enroll my child in school because I do not want my child to be stigmatized because she's already stigmatized. You mentioned that another teacher was speaking to her in a very derogatory, in a very derogatory way and it's not just the teacher it would be lots of people that will be giving her that glance which is not good so it would be better for you to move completely from that region and help her have a new start but she needs to see a child therapist a very good one that would help her and perhaps you might also need one to also teach you because we don't know it all i might think i know it all but i, I stand to be corrected and i'm very open to correction and i say this without you know trying to be insensitive about your plight or pointing an accusing finger at you that this is why i'm, I'm really like touching on all side of the story according to how i feel or i see it and i'm saying that our child needs to be protected much more it's never too late 
whatsoever that influence bad influence that she's had from outside whatsoever that has caused all of those negative reaction or encounters should be discussed and purged out um who disbedging her how long has this happened these are discussions and questions that i need you to ask that child and see how you can help help her rebuild her confidence and fix up all of these things again now to all of you sharing that videos i want to urge you to stop doing that we are all adults and we need to protect all of the minors around us and sharing this video is like encouraging or that we are not protecting that child's image in the society we need to protect this minor and i want to urge twitter as well to bring down that video and protect these children and make it, and i want twitter to make it impossible for such a video to be able to come out out there in a public space guys what else do you think I'm sorry that I have been pouring out different emotions like this thing hits me with anything that has to do with kids it really touched me like so differently what else do you guys want to add to this comment um, to this story feel free to add them in the comment section I'll be there to chat with you every now and then thank you so much for tuning in if you're yet to subscribe to this channel please do subscribe click on the bell notification and Help see this community grow. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.